A figure crashed through the window, shattering glass and wood, landing on its feet and releasing a rope. Karen sprang out of the chair, instinctively rushing backward, her bandaged right hand groping for anything and everything. And then came another silhouetted daredevil intruder, sliding on his rope until he landed by the bed. Who are you? screamed de Vries in German, collecting what thoughts she could, realizing that her gun was on the small table. What do you want here? You speak German, said the first invader, so you know what we want. Why else would you speak our language? It is second to my own, and few understand my native Walloon. Karen circled, approaching the table. There is he, Mrs. de Vries, asked the second man by the bed menacingly. You won't get out of here, you know. Our comrades will block you. The on the way up now. They just needed our signal, and the window was it. I don't know what you're talking about. Since you know who I am, does it shock you that I'm having an affair with the owner of this flat? It's an empty bed, not even slept in. We had a lover's quarrel. He drank too much, and we fought. Karen was within arm's reach of her weapon, and neither of the Nazis had bothered to unholster his. You've never had such fights with your women? If not, your children. She lunged for the gun, grabbed it, and fired into the first Neo as the stunned second unstrapped his holster. Stop, or you're dead, said de Vries. As she spoke, the steel-plated bedroom door swung open, crashing into the wall. Oh, my God, roared Witkowski, snapping on the light. She's got a live one. I thought it took a truck or a battering ram to get in here, said Karen, visibly shaken. Not if you've got grandchildren who visit you in Paris. They can get real playful. There's a concealed button in the frame. It was as far as the colonel got. An ear-shattering siren erupted, so loud that within seconds lights were turned on in the nearby buildings. They're coming to stop you from leaving, cried de Vries. Let's welcome them, youngster said Witkowski. He and Latham ran through the living room to the front door. The colonel opened it. He and Drew standing concealed behind the door itself. Two men rushed in, their automatic weapons on rapid fire, blowing up whatever was in their paths. The colonel and Drew took aim and shooting three rounds apiece, shattered the arms and hands of the killers. They collapsed, writhing and moaning. Cover them, shouted Witkowski, racing into the kitchen. Seconds later, the sirens stopped and the hallway lights were out. The colonel returned, giving his orders rapidly as clamoring footsteps, growing fainter, could be heard running down the hallway steps.